Uh, good morning to those of you that I, I haven't met. Um, I'm Scott Dennis, and I'm, I work for Instructure. And today I'm, I'm giving, a, uh, for complete beginners, how to use Canvas, OK? So <clears throat> um, for those of you in the room, how, how many of you have taught a class using Canvas so far? We've got, we've got a few people. OK, good. All right, so how many people have never been in it before at all? OK. So we've got, uh, we've got a few that have taught a class, a few that have never been there, and then everybody else, it sounds like they're just getting started, maybe. OK. So for this demonstration, <clears throat> I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be test, tester number one. Uh, that's going to be my username and login. OK. I'd like to go around the room and ask people to, to count off. So if I'm, I'm one, you are? Karen, do you want a number? 20? OK. Uh, Scott, do you want a number? 21. 22. 22. 23. 24. 25. 26. 26. Does anybody not have a number that wants a number? OK. All right, so my, I'm going to go to, right now, if you have a, if you have a, a device with you and you want to follow along and do this on your own, um, I'm going to go to uh, scottd.instructure.com. So Scott D. D is in Dennis. And my login, which because I was number one, my login is going to be tester01. And then my password will be the same thing. Okay. So for those of you that have your own devices and you're, and you're logging in, you would just be tester and then whatever your number is. If it's a single digit number, put the zero in the front. But you should be able to log into Canvas. <clears throat> okay, and those of you who have a mobile device and you're doing this process when you get logged in, um, look back up at me, and then I'll know that you're uh, that you're in. Can we log into our, our if you want to, account? yeah, yeah. You don't have to log into any account if you don't want to. If you want to log into your school account, go ahead. Okay. A lot of times, when when technology people do these sorts of demonstrations, they start with uh, the thirty thousand foot view, the big picture, and they give you a lot of background information. Um, in this case. Yeah, it's John. OK. Are you having problems hearing me? Is this better? Yeah, that's much better. OK, great. I'll stick to this thing. Um, so but in this case, I just want to, to show you that for this test account, you have two courses. You've got my old course. And then you should have a course that is uh, tied to the name of your test account. So in this case, I've got test course 01. So the first time that I log into my course, first time I enter my course, I'm going to see this menu that pops up that tells me I have a lot of choices of what I can do in my course the first time I log in. But in this case, I'm just going to click the X over here on the right-hand side and close that menu. I don't need to see that right now. Okay. And now I can see that I have a, uh, I have a course. I have some navigation choices along the side here. And it's asking me if I want to uh, configure some things. But if the first thing that I want to do on my course is get my course content in here. I've got some, some PDFs or some Word documents or PowerPoint slides or whatever it is. I want to get content up to where my students can access it. That's my first step. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to click on the files link over here on the left. Course files. Okay. And then I've got A window pulled up over here where I have some content. I've got some lesson, lesson one, lesson two PDFs. And 
just going to select those and drag and drop those into my course. Okay, so I can see it's uploading two files there. Uh, you can you can do a full folder. You can also create subfolders in Canvas and then drag and drop multiple files into that subfolder. Okay, you can also upload zip files as well. But um, there are more complicated ways to get content into your system. But at sort of the the base level, all you have to do is just go to your files area, drag and drop files onto the web browser, and they're uploaded. And that's any type of file. So if you've got Images, Word documents, PDFs, text files, HTML, whatever it is you already have, if you want to just drag and drop it, you can. And now at a very base level, when this course is published, your students have access to that content. If you do no other configuration, no organizing your content, no adding announcements, any of the things that people do in courses, your content's up there. Okay. Now if you want to create content, you don't have your content built, but you've got stuff you want to get to students. We've already uploaded electronic files. These are files that were created outside of Canvas. If I want to create stuff in Canvas, that's in Canvas that's called a page, and it is a web page. So if I go to Pages, it's it's taken me by default to the welcome page for the course, but. I can see if I look to the side. Oh. I've got create a new page right there. And I can create as many new pages as I want to, call them whatever I want. And it's going to take me into a page view where I have I have a rich content editor here, so I can format text, I can link to videos, I can upload files and attach them. I can pretty quickly build uh, basic content pages here. So again, I, if I wanted to copy and paste from a Word document into this rich content editor, or copy and paste from somewhere else on the web and put it in here, but I can create pages. I can add files. There's a files menu here. Any of those files that I drag, I drag and drop up into. Any English teachers out there? I drag and dropped. Is that a? Is that good? I can just link to that to that content. So I could pretty quickly upload a lot of files, and then I could create a page, and I could give context to what those files are, and then link to those files pretty quickly. So I don't have to do a lot of work. I could say, you know, here, here's the, uh, the reading list for this week. And then I've uploaded a PDF, and it has all the readings for that week. And I can link it in. You can see I've created this page in about a minute. Okay. And I'm, I'm very purposefully going through this quickly to, to sort of to prove that you can do this without a lot of steps. Okay. So I have, I have now created a page, and I've got some content that I drag and drop to upload, and I've linked it into my page. Now if I want to put that in context, I can go to the modules, and I can create a module. You can call it week one, lesson one, um, hands-on exercises. However I want to organize my course, I can create modules that are analogous to folders and organize my content. So I could make this is the this is the week one week one module. Then now that I have created a module I want to add content to it. And I created that page, so I'm going to go to uh, the drop down here and choose pages. Content page there. 
and I'll add that item. Okay. So, so far in six minutes, I've added content, I've organized it into modules, and now I want to um, set a home page for my students when they first log in. If I go back to the home page, I can choose what sort of a layout I want. I can change the home page layout. And I'll change it to a page that I'll design myself. And I'm going to edit that page. logging into a different web browser because in Chrome, I, on this computer, I've had trouble with the record a video feature, and I want to show that to you. OK, so I'm, I'm back in the same course where I was, and I'm going to edit my home page again and show you that you can, you can add a video introduction right here. You can, uh, you can record media pretty much anywhere, in the rich anywhere where the rich content editor exists. So anywhere where you're editing text, you can also add video. So when you're giving feedback to students on work they've turned in, or you're creating weekly announcements, creating uh, video or just even an audio only recording is very easy to do. Uh, sometimes when I'm getting ready to type out four or five paragraphs of feedback to a student, I find it's easier to just record a video. But I could click on this button here to to record a video. Hello, welcome to the class. It's the first day. Yay. Hello, welcome to the class. It's the first day. Okay. Okay. So I've added I've added a, a video comment into my page right there. Save that tunnel carpal syndrome from having to type everything out. All right. So I've got my content in. I got a landing page for the students to see when they first get in that will help them to know what to do next. Um, but I want to give them more information, so I want to add to my syllabus. Okay. So I'm going to go to the syllabus tab, the syllabus link over here, and I'm going to see that the syllabus link is composed of three main areas. Having a hard time staying with the podium. I want to walk around and point at stuff. But you've got up at the top, you've got a little text area there, and then it's where it says uh, date, day, details. That will show a list of all of your assignments and all of the due dates for those assignments. So as you build assignments, they'll get added to that calendar over there. You'll see them listed on the calendar. You'll also see them automatically listed in your syllabus. If you go into your assignment settings and you change a due date, you change 
an access date that will automatically update your uh, calendar and your syllabus. If you have something on your calendar and you drag and drop it from one place to another on the calendar, it will update your syllabus, it will update your assignment settings. So those pieces are all tied together. It's, uh, I've heard the analogy of a kaleidoscope. You're looking at the same information from different angles, right? So your assignments, your um, calendar, your syllabus will all, uh, they're all tied to the same thing. But there's also this text area here, right? There's this area here where I could be putting information for my students. And if I click on Edit Syllabus Description, some people choose to copy and paste or even just type in all of the information for their syllabus here. You know, your grading policies, plagiarism policies, due dates, um, all that stuff that's in our syllabus of syllabi, um, you could have that here in the assignment description. Other people will just say, um, you know, click here for course information. And I'm going to link that text to a file that I'm going to upload. So if I've already got my syllabus, you know, I, maybe I already filed it with the Office of Instruction or however I do things, and I want to just link it in. I don't want to mess with copying and pasting and having a lot of text in that description field. Then right there, the students click on it and they get my info. Right. So my point, I guess my point is today is that you can build your courses in a very time intensive, very complicated, very powerful way. You can also very quickly, in, if you already have your syllabus and you have your lesson content, you have the things you want your students to know about, you can very quickly add that to Canvas in just a few minutes. All right, so we've got content up there, we've got a way to communicate with students. We've looked at our syllabus. I want to show you that if I go into the calendar for this course, similar to, say, like Google calendars or some of the web-based calendar systems, I have, I, I personally have access to multiple calendars, right? In this case, I want to affect the calendar of my my test course, so I'm making sure that I've selected that one. But if I want to start adding events, I can just click on a day. I can say um, the week one paper is due. And I want it to, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to make an, uh, an assignment, not an event. An event is an ungraded thing. I want to have a graded thing, so I'm going to make an assignment here. Well, I'm going to say that I want it to have, um, it's worth 10 points. It's, it's due March 8th on the, um, uh, uh, 12 a.m. I could even change that if I wanted to. Let's change it to, And I'm going to allow students to do an online submission. And update that assignment. OK, so now, see, it's, on the, it's now on my calendar. If I go back to my assignments area in my course. It's now it's there. I can see it on my assignments. And I can see it in my syllabus as well. It's going to be listed in my syllabus already. So it automatically builds out my syllabus for me and it connects everything. If I this is due March 8th, if I went into the calendar for this course, and I decided I want to move it to, I'm going to be nice, I'm going to give them an extra week.
Now if I go and look, I'll see that it's automatically updated that stuff. See, March 15th now. Okay, so I've got a way to add my assignments. I can add them quickly all from one place. I just go to the calendar, click where I want to add things. I've got my course content up. I've got announcement. Or I've got a, a home page for the course, and um, now I want to build a quiz. Okay, so I'm going to go to the quizzes link, and I'll create a new quiz. So if I have question, if I've already set up question banks, either um, at my say my department level or school wide level, or if I, I have a question bank in my course, I can pull from, I can find questions. I can also create question groups and questions here, and they're the you know the standard type of electronic questions you you expect to find, multiple choice, true, false, essay, all those different types of questions. In this case, let's just do a true, false question. And I'll just leave it as one point. Okay, so now when I go back to the, well, I'm going to publish it too. Publishing it. So if you if you you're not quite ready to get your quiz out there where people will see it, uh, you're still working on it. You want to come back to it. You don't want to publish it. When it's ready for prime time, you want your students to see it and be able to take it. You want to publish it. So I published it. Now if I go back to my syllabus, because this thing had points associated with it, I now see my quiz there as well. Okay? So we're going on, what are we, 14 minutes? And we've got, we've got a quiz, we've got content, we've got pages. So obviously this is not very pretty. I'm trying to do this quickly to, to show that it's, uh, it's fairly simple, right? Um, if I had my content from another course, from a previous course, I could just copy all that in here too, as easily. If I want to do that, note I've got my, my old course here, course that I taught last term, say, and I want to get all that content into my new course. All I need to do is go into my new course and go to settings. say import content into this course and it's going to give me several options. I can import, if I have like a Respondus or some sort of a quiz bank builder thing, I can, I've got ways to import individual quizzes or um, files. I can also um, import content from a content package. I can import content from another system. So maybe I'm moving from Blackboard or I'm moving from Moodle, from Angel and I want to import my old course archive that I have. I could use this content package from another system here. Or I could just say copy content from another Canvas course. And any Canvas course that I have um, teacher level rights in, I'm going to see listed here. So I'll just click on my old course, copy from this course, and it's going to um, import everything. And then in a few minutes, I'll get an email message saying, your content has been imported and it's, you're ready to decide, do you want to keep all the same due dates or do you want to shift all your due dates forward by 10 weeks? Um, do you want to bring in your quizzes and your assignments or only your assignments? You know, you'll get some options. See, so it, it already anticipated that because I started assignments on March 15th that that's the start date for my course. 
but it's got all the stuff that it's bringing in it's showing me there. So kind of the, like the danger here is that you can bring in a lot of stuff that you don't really want anymore, right? That you bring in garbage. But um, if you clean your course up or if you decide to only bring in certain content during this process, then you'll quickly get what you need. Okay. So, and if I go back to my files area now, I'll see, I should see that I have all that stuff. All my stuff is in here. And that, what did that take, about 30 seconds for that to bring in a 10-week course? Okay, so now that, now that we talked about the basics, you're out there thinking about building your own, your own course. Are, are you thinking, yeah, he showed us a lot of stuff, but he didn't show me X. Is there something that you want to know how to do that you didn't see? I want to know how to build an announcement or how to build outcomes or... Gradebook. Gradebook? Okay. So for Gradebook, I'm going to actually go into a live, a, a different environment and show you that. I love my Mac, I love my Mac. Okay, how many people have heard of the speed grader? About uh, a few, okay. So I'm, I'm now logged in, I've got a course that I'm teaching and I need to grade the assignments that have been turned in. When I first log in, I'm looking at what's called my, my dashboard here, and I see new announcements, new conversations. I also see a to-do list over here that's global that shows me all of the, because I'm a teacher, it shows me all of the assignments that there are things that I need to grade for all my courses. So I could just, doesn't matter what course it is, I could just start grading stuff. Or I can go into a specific course and I can see stuff that needs to be graded for that course. Um, I really like this feature because it allows me to very quickly see what needs to be graded and then get in there and grade it um, rather than have to click into this course, click into this assignment, see if there are submissions, click out of that, click back in someplace else. So if I have just a few minutes to do a little bit of grading, I can jump in very quickly and, and get feedback back to people quickly. But I, so I've got this one here needs to be graded. If I click on it, it opens up what's called the speed grader. And you can do this on your iPad or whatever device you use. But I can see right now that this person, Ryan um, Brook, has submitted a screenshot, which the directions for the assignment were to set some things up in your course uh, calendar and then submit a screenshot. So I can see Ryan's screenshot here. I can use the grading rubric that I have set up for this course. Um, did they add assignments and events to the calendar? Yes, they did. Did they submit a screenshot? Yes, they did. Okay, save. So now Ryan's gonna get that, he's gonna get that rubric with what he accomplished, what he didn't accomplish. You can see how many points he got. I can leave him a comment here. I can do the video comment if I want to here. And then I can move on to the next student. I can look and see who else. You can see that Victoria has submitted this. I could jump down and grade her if I want to or I can scan forward to the next assignment, or the next user, I mean, sorry, just like go down the list. And I can jump back to the home page again and see what else still needs to be done. So if you use, if you use rubrics and you set up in a rubric for each assignment and, and specify specific criteria, it's relatively easy to go in there, click, 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 fill out the rubric, and then give them any feedback that you need to down there at the bottom and then move to the next submission for that assignment. So grading, um, if you use the speed grader, can be very streamlined and quick. Um, I also, sometimes I like it because I might have 
10 submissions from students that are I need to grade, and they're all, um, say nine out of 10 of them, they're no-brainers, they, did, they, they, did, they understood everything, they did things correctly, I just need to use that rubric to grade them and then move on. And then there's one that I want to go back and actually give more feedback and say, you know, did you consider these things? So I can quickly use the speed grader to clear through all the ones where it's more or less pro forma to get the grading done. And then I can go back with a full-size keyboard and everything and give that more in-depth feedback for some students. But the question was about grading in the grade book. I've got the speed grader here. I also can click on the grades tab and I can see a sort of a more traditional grade book look for um, all students and all um, assignments. And if I want to, I can just click into a spot, give some points, hit the enter key, give some points, arrow back up, change the grade. So in some tools that I've used, you have to use your mouse to like click into a grade cell and then say edit and then enter your grades and then hit save. With this, you can, like you can with Excel, you can just tab back and forth and enter by hand. So if you want to sit there, you know, like you've got a stack of papers that you're grading and you want to sit there with your papers and your gradebook open, you can treat it like you would Excel and just enter the scores in. You can also give feedback from the gradebook as well. And then there are options like, you know, hide the student names, rearrange the columns in the gradebook. Um, you can do sort of traditional stuff with it. But does that answer your question about how to grade? Okay. So to recap, there's two main methods. There's the traditional spreadsheet view, and then there's the speed grader. Welcome. So you're getting ready to use Canvas. What else? Uh, are you wondering about, or what did I cover that I went through it too quickly, or you were you didn't see me click on a link, or? Actually, I have another question about the gradebook, which is sure. dropping out reports, or what can you pull out of it as a faculty? Okay, so probably the. We do an evaluation-heavy process, so a lot of written criteria gets pulled into other things. Um, so you've got a you've got a grades report that will show you sort of like, of all my courses, this is how those classes are going, right? So I want to compare one course to another on an aggregate level. Uh, you can also. I'm more thinking that the data from the gradebook you were just in, like pulling that out. So, prob so my, my sort of predilection, what I would do is I would go to the gradebook and go to download the text, just do a text dump, and then I can, uh, I can run it through uh, Excel or, yeah, whatever. So I go to here to the, the options and go to, um, uh, where is it? Download scores, okay, right there. So I would probably just grab the text data. Yeah. Yeah, you get a spreadsheet with all the scores and the names and the assignment names and everything. And you can, um, if, if you're going to be doing grading offline, um, d I would not try to create a text file and then upload that. I would instead download a text file, modify it, and then upload that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you've got averages for um, the class. Um, there, yeah, so you, you can get uh, your totals over here, and then you also have totals for each assignment group as well. So uh, I've created an assignment group for each module in my course. If you had week one, week two, you'd see those as well. Okay. There was a hand over here. Yeah, can you talk about communicating with students with the email system? Yeah, sure, sure. So in, there's sort of three main ways to communicate with people in uh, Canvas. You have announcements, you know, standard course announcements. This is going to go out to all students. And I guess I should take a step back and say that users can set their own communication preferences in um, Canvas. So 
I send out a communication, you're going to choose how you want to receive it and with what frequency. So you could say, I want to get a text message every time I get an email from my instructor. Or maybe my instructor sends too many emails and I want to just get like a digest once a week. I can set those preferences. But as far as the communication going to people, you've got three primary methods. You've got um, discussions, which are analogous to a discussion board or a forum. You've got course announcements, and then you have an, an inbox. All right. So if I'm in a course, I can go to make an announcement. I have an announcements tab here. And I can set, depending on, on how much I depend on um, announcements, I could set my home page view to show announcements. So when the students first come into the course, what they see is the list of announcements. Um, what I found is that announcements don't have as much importance in Canvas as they do in some other systems because students can set their communication preferences to where they don't have to log into the course to get the info, right? So I can send, I can set it up so that if somebody posts into a discussion or somebody emails me, I get that information outside of Canvas. I don't have to log in to see it, okay? But the other two methods, the discussions, I can start a new discussion here and then I can have students posting in that discussion, replying to each other. And then I also have an inbox here. And it looks a lot like other mail systems. I can click on a, um, click on a communication from somebody and reply to it. I can make a new message and I can enter people's names. or I can enter in a entire section or course and just choose, I want all of the teachers for this course. So now I'm gonna send a message to all the teachers in that course. But if I, set, if I send one of these messages, if a person in their settings has set how they want to receive it, I can see here that I want to receive. So I went to I went to settings, and then in my settings I chose notifications. I go here to notifications. Okay, and now I, I see I can set myself um, Twitter, Facebook, email. Um, text messaging, I can set different communication methods that I want to receive information at. And then in notifications, I can decide what sort of things I want to be notified about. Right? So maybe I want to get a text message for one thing, but I want another thing to hit my email. If I go to notification preferences for communication, I can say, right now I've got it set so that any time anyone replies to a this conversation that I'm involved in or sends me a message in conversations or whatever, I'm going to get immediately, I'm going to get a, an email message sent to my Gmail account. Nice, for me, the nice thing about that is if somebody within Canvas sends me a, a message and it comes out to my Gmail, I can hit reply from within my Gmail inbox and it will go back into Canvas and then they'll get it however they've set up their preferences. So rather than being this this little closed system where you have to log in to get communication with other people, you can set up your preferences how you like. Question, Kathy. So, let's say that they, the student selects Facebook, and then we're sending, as faculty, we're sending something that, you know, would ordinarily instructor to student be confidential to the student. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe the student doesn't like what the teacher said or whatever and decides to make it go public on their Facebook. I mean, what, 
what are some of the fallouts from the extensiveness of social media? Well, what there's kind of I guess there's, there's kind of two levels of answer to that question. One is the actual software interface. If I go in and I set up my Facebook profile, um, if I set, set up Facebook to tie to Canvas and I say I want to get a notification at my Facebook account when you send me a message, that's not going to go on my public wall and it's not going to be something that other people can see. Just in Facebook, I'm going to get a little app notification that says, hey, you have a... Uh, communication from your instructor and that you click on it in Facebook and it takes you back to Canvas. Okay, so from the, from the technology standpoint, um, it, it doesn't, it won't post anywhere publicly and, it, and there isn't a way for somebody to say, you know, add to my profile, you know, or display publicly. Oh, they can't do it even for they, their own choice. There's not a, like, publish this to Facebook option. Uh, that being said, there's no, there's nothing to stop somebody from copying and pasting yeah. something yeah. or screenshotting or whatever. Yeah. But there but there isn't a designed method for publishing information to Facebook. Okay. So, yeah. Um, you're training us, but who trains the students on it? That's that's up to your local institution. So it, it's different from every client. Um, What's the question? The question was who, who at your institution is, is providing student orientation and training? The answer that I was going to give is that we, we do have resources that we provide to clients to help them orient their own students. We have student orientation videos and guides and topics and stuff. We have some institutions that have contracted with Instructure to actually do that. Um, most clients do that themselves. They have a, a student orientation process. But if you are looking for information to help people, if you go to guides.instructure.com, you'll find that there are guides for students, instructors, observers. If you go to the guides and you type in what resources does Instructure provide to their clients, you'll find student orientations, instructor orientations, all that, yeah, yeah. Question. Can you um, clarify the, the distinction between announcements, discussions, and communications? Okay, so you've got let's see. in my course, I have discussions, and discussions are really more um, there's going to be an exchange of information between lots of people. So it's a message board, essentially. I can go into a discussion and I can make a new topic or I can reply to somebody else's topic. I can reply to a reply. So it's, it's designed for a conversation that happens within the course. Okay. The uh, inbox up here is the closest thing in Canvas you'll find to email. So I want to send and receive messages back and forth between a group of people or just back and forth between one person and I. This is, this is email, basically. Okay. And an announcement can only be made by an instructor and it's a broadcast out to everyone in the class. You can, you can set your announcements to let students comment on them or post replies, but by default it's designed as a broadcast tool. You're welcome. Do you have a question? Okay, great. So if you're at if you're at Tacoma, information commons is where your students should go. Question? I'm on the inbox. I don't see a reply function for emails. I saw an email message to the inbox. So if I want to reply to somebody. I just selected the communication with Laura and I just start typing right here. What's this monologue box that you're coming up? Monologue? If I just if I start t typing right here, that's gonna be a reply to her. Yeah. So should I be I, I sent myself a message, but I should be a reply to myself too. 
I, you know what, I've never actually tried to send myself a message in reply, so I, I'm, I'm not sure what the monologue option is. I think, I think monologue is what shows up when you send yourself a message. Okay. I think that's like through the sender is, is that the Okay. But I just clicked on mine. Yeah, yeah, monologue, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, morning. Okay, so um, any any other questions about this or where you, where you can go next to get more information? Just remember that help.canvas.com and guides.canvas.com. Uh, All right, well, thank you very much.